This episode is brought to you by Set for Life Insurance. Protect yourself against life setbacks with Set for Life Insurance. Set for Life Insurance gets you disability and life insurance at a reduced cost with their exclusive discounts. Now that's why I use them. Visit www.setforlifeinsurance.com and tell them Dr. Darko sent you. Welcome to Doc's Outside the Box Podcast. This is your official show, looking inside the minds of cutting edge and innovative doctors. Think you'll find these stories in any medical textbook? Sorry. You're getting real life insight from men and women pushing the envelope beyond medicine. Ordinary doctors doing extraordinary things. Let's start now with your host, Dr. Nee Darko. Hey docs, are you looking to learn how to become a physician leader? Then Physician CEO is for you. Physician CEO is an accelerated business immersion program designed for physicians and developed by MBA faculty from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. So learn more at www.physician-ceo.com forward slash D-O-T-B. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? What's good? It's Dr. Nee here. Look, before we get into our next episode, I want to talk to you all about something. Let's wrap a taste. So I've been saying it for the past two years now, maybe even longer than that, that I've been wanting to get back in shape 40 now. You know, I just have not been taking care of myself the way in which I really feel like I should. But I have been basically using every excuse in the book to prevent or to start from doing it, right? And from clinical work, you know, doing locum tenens, traveling, or working with other businesses, you know, the podcast, Equal Access Health, and some other businesses, or family time, some leisure things like watching How to Get Away with Murder, which is off the chain. Y'all need to be watching the show. This show is great, as well as The Walking Dead, which, hmm, let's just move on. <laughs> Every excuse I've been using really to not work out and you know, I'm sick and tired of this. I want to be able to chase my son down when he gets to a certain age, right? And I'm just basically right now saying that I'm going to use the internet. I'm going to use social media to make myself more accountable to you all. So as I'm recording this right now, I am on week four, day one of T25 with Sean T. And I can't front, it is kicking my ass. Sometimes I'm doing it when I'm post-call. Sometimes I'm doing it while I'm on call. But I'm putting the results of this on Instagram so that I literally can be called out. And if you don't hear from me a couple of days or after a couple of days, people literally have been sending me messages like, Dr. Nee, we haven't been hearing from you. And I love it. And if you want to follow me, if you want to follow my progress and see how I'm doing it, or maybe find a way to kind of get some inspiration for yourself or some motivation for yourself, I suggest, come on, just follow me. My tag on Instagram is Dr. Nee Darko. That's D R N I I D A R K O. And, you know, follow me, leave me some motivation. And if it gets you motivated also, that's even better. So, the other thing also that I'm doing, I'm reading two books. First book is Profit First, which is a book mainly for businesses, but it's a book to basically figure out how to make sure that you are profiting first from your business as opposed to just paying the bills first. And, some other things, and then leaving whatever is left as profit for yourself. And so far, it's a really good read, as well as another book called Show Your Work. And this is basically a book that tells you how to create internet credence, how to develop credibility, so to speak, by basically just documenting your entire path from you know starting out nowhere and whatever you're doing to getting to the point where you want to be considered a thought leader, or even just considered an expert in that realm. So expect a comprehensive review of these two books coming soon. Now on this episode, I'm going to continue the process of featuring physician podcasters who I think you all should be listening to. And you're going to be hearing from Dr. Barry Pierre, who is very well accomplished, just an all around good dude. And he hosts a podcast that is called The Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry Podcast. And it's about explaining the really complex medical issues that patients normally get, not sure exactly what to take from it. He is taking those complex issues and making them more simplified so that he can allow his patients to take back more control of their health. Now, Dr. Barry is a board-certified internal medicine physician, and he serves as the internal medicine residency program director, as well as the director for medical education at Wellington Regional Medical Center. 
He is also the founder of drpierresblog.com and is a best-selling author as well as national speaker. So look, we chopped it up on this episode. This is going to be a really good one. I think it's really easy to tell how dynamic he is. And I found it really easy to kind of jive with him. And I hope it comes out really easy. I hope you can really catch on to that on this podcast. Um, So one thing that I think was really cool and I think you will really be interested in is despite all of the accomplishments that he has, he still, until very recently, was suffering from imposter syndrome. He's going to talk about that as well as talk about how he was able to get past that. He's going to share the highs, the lows of starting a podcast or just even starting something creative when you are a perfectionist. He's going to delve into blogging, live streaming, and then how that got him into podcasts. And then we're also going to hear about what's next for him. So like I said, when I'm featuring these physician podcasters, let it be known, please, I hope you all check out, go to drneedarko.com, go to the website and check out the podcast section. If you go in there, you will see that there is a physician podcast directory where you can see a whole bunch of different physicians who are hosting podcasts on different subjects. Go out there, show them some love. And without further ado, I present the dynamic Dr. Barry Pierre. Dr. Barry Pierre from the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry podcast. What's good? What's up? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming on. Doc's Outside the Box. Dr. Me, first of all, thank you for having me. Talking a little bit beforehand, I have been an avid listener to Doc's Outside the Box right from the beginning. I wholeheartedly use Doc's Outside the Box as my stepping stone. I think it's been the reason why I'm where I'm at today. So first of all, thank you for having me. Oh, man. I really appreciate that. That really means a lot to me. And how much do I owe you for that? Oh. <laughs> check, check. <laughs> the, the invoice is in the mail. Invoice is in the mail. <laughs> no, but for real, thank you very much for saying that. That really means a lot to me because I'm not lying. When I started this podcast, I literally was trying to learn all the successful tips that people were doing. And I just said, well, why don't I share that with everybody else? And everybody else was literally me, my wife, and like my mother who was just listening, (laughs) you know, and to be able to reach people is really means a lot to me. And that's why we're here. We want to learn more about how you've been able to reach people because you host your own podcast, man. Your podcast is called Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. And you take it from a different standpoint. You are basically trying to dumb down the really confusing topics of, you know, medical terminology for patients to learn and stuff. And you know, I think that's definitely admirable. And I think it's really difficult nowadays with so many different things out there like WhatsApp and Facebook. So that's why you're here. <laughs> but let me give you an opportunity right. to introduce yourself and let me stop taking your shine, sure. man. Sure, sure. No, no, no. I appreciate it. You know, again, I'm uh, Dr. Barry Pierre, board certified internist. I've been doing this podcast thing for a little over a year now, which is surprising when I think about it. And I think you're right. You know, it was definitely something that I did to almost be a champion for patients, but really almost selfishly a champion for physicians around. You know, I felt this void. I was doing outpatient medicine and I felt this void of a knowledge gap. And it wasn't a knowledge gap from the physician standpoint. It was a gap that patients, right? The normal person who came into your office, like didn't think that we were smart enough to teach them about health anymore, right? Like, they put all of their eggs in Dr. Google, right? They put all of their eggs in WebMD and all these different websites and health coaches that weren't you know, professionally trained to teach them health. They were getting all of their information from them versus the folks like us who've been you know, in it 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, studying, grinding, passing boards after boards, tests after tests. Loans and- after loans. Oh, I didn't even know. (laughs) You know, and we did all of that hard work, and to have someone kind of usurp us because they can easily, you know, click a couple letters on their phone and say, "No, no, no, this person right here in this random blog says that I should be taking this medication," like, and almost having to prove yourself. So I put this blog out here not only to say, like, "Hey, you know what? These topics aren't as difficult where it comes to blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension," but you can actually learn from an expert who does this every single day. Now, see, one thing that I totally forgot about is actually you started off as a, just a regular blog, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you started off as a blog. What made you decide to take it into the podcast form? And this is one of the things where I really favor, you know, Docs Outside the Box and you is like, I realized that, yes, I can write, 
And I actually like writing. It's not like I didn't like writing, which is usually a holder for a lot of physicians. They just don't like the writing. But the audio was so much like easier to get my information out there. And I felt that I was missing a good segment of the population out there by just doing the writing. Like, cause I have people who love reading the blogs, but you know, if they never came to the website or they never went to, you know, sit down and like actually take time to read it, like I would miss out. And I felt if I'm going to like teach, right. If I'm going to teach in all aspects of learning, not only do I have to do it when you read, but I have to do it from an audio standpoint and even a visual standpoint as well. Is there a way that you can quantify your reach in terms of how it was when you just had a blog versus how it was once you decided to do a podcast? Oh, oh. did you pay attention to that? Or because the reason I'm bringing that up is because I'm the same way. When I write, I write very academically, right? Which is really boring. And it takes me a long time. I edit, re-edit. It's nothing like how I really talk. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting to find out like how you've been able to reach people now that you have a podcast and that kind of augments your blog or even vice versa. It'd be interesting to find out. But, and it's very funny. When I used to just write the blogs, I tended to get a much more older crowd because they were already used to reading for the information. But because I was just writing, the younger crowd, I, I laugh, right? I'm more talking like the 18 to like 35 year olds who, you know, they're not necessarily reading to learn more or less, right? They're kind of reading to get the information, get that, you know, word of the day, and then they're trying to go somewhere. And because they're always constantly moving and shaking, right? They can't read while they're in the shower, right? They can't read while they're driving to work or they can't read while they're at work. So I was missing such a huge population that once I added the audio aspect of the podcast, all of a sudden people who I didn't even realize read my blogs would tell me like, oh, hey, I love the podcast, right? And I also read the blogs as well because it was almost, they were more vocal about the fact that, you know, like, oh, hey, I see what you're doing. Hmm. So how did you, that whole transition to making a podcast, can you talk to the audience about, you know, what was it like, you know, getting the equipment, using the equipment, recording? Were there any potholes, any hiccups? Sure. Anything like that. Let's talk about that. Sure. So in the beginning stages is always funny, especially in the podcast. And you're like, now, like I hate listening to my early episodes same because way. of it. Same way. I can't stand listening to like the first like 70 episodes. Yeah. And you know what's so bad? Was, one, I didn't realize like how much my voice sounded, right? Like, especially when you're doing the podcast, you actually got to listen to like what you're doing, right? So, you know, having to get used to actually hearing my voice was a step for me. And, you know, getting equipment, right? I had like a sound, like almost like I had a mixer. I had you microphones. Had yeah. Oh, I you went all out, my man. I didn't know no better, right? I just thought like, oh, like I just Googled like, again, like, you know, my, my patients do, right? I Googled like, oh, how do you do a podcast? All of a sudden, people are telling me I need a mixer. People are telling me I need a stand. I need a microphone. I need this type of microphone. And, you know, and I went out and I said, all right, let me get all of these things here. And, you know, I even know people who've gotten office space or they've rented out a studio to do a podcast. That's crazy, wow. man. Keep going. I'm, my bad for interrupting. Yeah, no, no, no. That's crazy. Yeah. But, you know, so I went all out because I said, oh, I'm going to make the best podcast. Right? And then I go to hit record and I'm like, oh, like I actually got to like, yeah, like talking in talk unison. So here I am. I'm in this corner of my house and I'm just talking, talking to myself, talking to myself and recording. And then I had to record. Then I'm like, oh, I need an intro. Then I had to get an intro portion. So then I had to learn not only to be a podcaster as recording, I had to learn how to edit uh, the stuff as well, too. So I became my own like little producer trying to do my show. And then like that was just it, right? Like this is just an audio file on my computer. I had to like Google like, hey, how do I get this on iTunes? And yeah, that's the topic. <laughs> yeah. So you had all of these like technical hurdles that I didn't realize. Like, for example, like when I did a blog, you know, I opened up my WordPress. I type some words, I press one button and it's there. Publish it. I, like, <laughs> I publish it, it's there. I don't have to, it's not that extra work. Whereas when I do the podcast, I'm recording it in different segments. I'm recording an intro. I'm recording the main portion. I may record a conclusion. Then I got to put it all together. Then I got to listen to it to make sure I didn't sound too crazy while I was recording, right? Because it's not like I'm, especially in the beginning, not like I'm doing one take episodes, right? So like I'm editing, I'm cutting out. I'm like, oh, I don't say, don't say this. Like I'm repeating the words. Like I'm trying to get like super perfect. Unfortunately, because of why? Because most physicians are so type A. We have to be 100% perfect or we won't do anything, right? So I'm trying to get super perfect. And it took forever, ever just to like from having equipment, recording one episode to actually say, okay, this is good enough to put out there. 
Mm. Yeah, I love it. it was definitely some technical hurdles that I'm not too fond of from a memory standpoint. I love it because it literally shows and the people who are listening who haven't started a podcast and you know, it just lets you know, like we all go through it. I actually am still going through it right now. You know, like I forget how many episodes I'm in and I'm still learning the process. I'm still fine tuning. There's still episodes where I can't stand listening to my voice. You know, the thing that I really enjoy about what you just mentioned about, you know, just making a podcast and taking this information and putting it in this format is I like the fact that you're willing to meet your patients where they're at, right? Mm -hmm. I actually have that concept. Like, I have that topic in one of my talks. So I've done a talk in Ghana. I've done a talk at Feminem. I've also done some other talks online where you know I'm trying to get doctors to understand that you really have to meet your patients where they are because there's so many competing pieces of information out there, particularly mm-hmm. digitally, right? Like when's the last time, like I was on a train recently in New York and like there's still all of these advertisements that are you know, on the train about you know going to this different dentist or this different doctor and nobody's looking up everybody's looking down right oh, that's and, good point. Very right? point everybody's looking down or even on the bus the same thing everything is digital the same thing even with whatsapp and you know i was in ghana recently and you know how many people have learned so many different medical rumors or so many different rumors that go through whatsapp you know it's really hard to dispel a lot of these things if all you're doing is waiting for your patient to come see you every 6 months in your office oh yes you know, or trying to put an advertisement up and they're barely looking at it. So it's just a sign of the times right now. It is. I think what we don't have the luxury, especially, you know, physicians in our age group, right? We don't have the luxury of, you know, putting a sign up and patients coming to flock to us. We don't have the luxury of saying like, hey, like I want you to jump 10 times and the patient just jumps 10 times, right? Oh yeah, that uh, journalistic that, model is gone. Yeah, like that's gone. Like, you have patients now, and the first week when we talk about the patient doctor relationship, you have patients now who want to be 50 50, right? Like, hey, doc, I'm about this health life just like you, right? So when you tell me jump 10 times, you also need to tell me why I need to jump 10 times. Right. Why is that beneficial for me to jump 10 times? And after I jump 10 times, like, what else am I going to get out of it, right? We're not able to just kind of turn around and do the jumping thing and then walk away, right? Because our patients want to be just as much in control of their health as you want to be in control of their health. Yeah, it's a really good point. I love that. I love that. Now tell me, you, I mean, you haven't stopped that podcasting and you haven't stopped that blogging. Like, what other things are you doing? Because I know every now and then you're on Instagram, you're on... Again, it was one of those things where I, like, I was looking around when I was doing a podcast because when I started doing the blog, it was one of those things. In fact, it's funny to think back. When I got into the podcast, it was because I was already doing live stream videos. Like, so I was oh. doing uh, the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry live stream video on Facebook. And then I would post it on YouTube, right? Because I figured like, oh, hey, you know what? Like maybe they want to like see me. Like they want to see me talking about blood pressure, diabetes and like get that visual picture. Like, okay, like this guy is an expert, right? And again, here I am, right? Board certified physician, right? Like I've gone through residency, I passed my boards and I still felt I had to quantify myself in front of strangers, really, right? Who hadn't seen me and say, all right, this guy knows what he's talking about when he talks about blood pressure, right? Because that's the world we live in. So I started doing the live stream videos and getting traction from the live stream videos to the point when patients would come to see me in my office, they would say, oh, hey, I just saw a couple of your videos. You got a great smile. I know you're going to be great, right? So I've already like established like, hey, like I'm the head honcho coming to health, right? Because they've seen a video, they read a blog that says like, oh, this is what you need to do. So mm-hmm. then I took that and positioned it right to the podcast because I felt like, hey, like maybe I'm missing people again, who can't necessarily watch me for 10, 15, 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes talking about a topic, but they'll listen on their way to work, right? They'll listen while they're in the shower. They'll listen while they're cooking. So I say, you know what? Like if I'm going to be about this health stuff, right? Like I'm going to be about the health when I'm writing. I'm going to be about it when I'm doing my podcasting. I'm going to be about the health when I'm doing the videos, right? Because I want no excuses, right? This is 2018 going on 2019, right? Right. No excuses of why you're not, you know, more in control of your health, right? And that's the goal, right? Like, I'm going to put that power back into you because that's what you're asking for, right? You want the control of your health, but you know what? Maybe you're saying, you know, it's a little too difficult and I don't really know about colon cancer like that. I don't know about breast cancer like that. I don't know about hypertension like that, but here I go. Like, this is all you need to know. And then I give you that empowerment to say, hey, doc, I learned about this, but I got some more questions. 
<clears throat> now, are you putting disclaimers in your podcast or in your Facebook lives? Because isn't there some type of legal stuff? Yeah, no. So it's funny. I have a disclaimer on my website, right? Which is essentially means says that like, even though like I'm board certified, this and that and that, don't listen to nothing I say, right? And <laughs> I've seen that. It's hilarious, man. It's just like, yeah, this is strictly for like, what, entertainment this purposes? For entertainment purposes. <laughs> and I'm glad you brought that point up, especially for, you know, because I know, especially with the audience you have, right, you're going to have a lot of medical students who are going to be attending who may want to do this, who may want to get into social media, right? Like, you just need to have, because I talked to a business lawyer, you need to have that somewhere, right? There's some people, if they primarily do video, they'll have a little tag right in front of their video right before the video starts that little you know like almost like the fbi disclaimer Mm -hmm. like don't listen to nothing that i'm about to tell you in the next 15 to 20 minutes because i may be a quack right not that i'm concerned about right but again you have to do to protect yourself right so i think that's a two-parter right you got to protect yourself from a legal standpoint because again you know someone may run wild with something crazy you say and then you gotta explain (laughs) Mm, 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 mm. that's the type of society we live in right now so you just Mm -hmm. go and protect yourself man you know, I'm really interested, you know, before we started recording, you were telling me about all the different opportunities that you've gotten now, because I guess your brand is more out there. Yes. Obviously, you have your own podcast, your blog, your Facebooking, all that stuff. Talk to us about that. Like, what kind of opportunities you've been getting now? So I think especially, and I don't want to say I hate the tutoring, because I actually love doing it, right? I love the tutor horn, the docs outside the box, right? Because it came at a time when I was doing outpatient medicine, but I wasn't happy. Right. And I wasn't happy, not because I didn't want to take care of patients. Right. There was just something that I was doing that I just didn't feel fulfilled. And I was listening to your podcast episode. I want to say episode three, don't kill me. I was listening to podcast episode three, Dr. Dre. And he was like, what is your worth? Right. Like at the end of the day, can you say like, I'm doing everything that I'm worth it. Right. And I remember looking around my office. I was at that patient. I was like, you know what? I should be doing more. (laughs) Right. Like I should be doing more. I'm worth more. Like, what am I just doing? Right. And that's when I really, like, I wrote a blog about it. Right. <laughs> Again, because that's what I knew. Right. Like, I wrote a, this was before the videos. This was before the podcasting. This is like 2016, 2017 ish. Right. This is before all of that. Right. This is before all of it kind of came to fruition. And I said, I'm going to do more. And, you know, I took it serious. Like, I even hate thinking about my old website. Right. I had a little reeky dink blog. Oh, I was, on I was like, hold on a second, Dr. Barry. Hold on. <laughs> like, you are at this point. You've gone through college, you've Mm -hmm. gone through medical school, which is extremely hard to get into and extremely hard to get out of. You passed your board, you're board certified, you're practicing. What else is there to really accomplish? I mean, you know, there was like some pit in my stomach that I didn't feel I was doing enough. The reason I'm asking is because this is similar to how I felt. Sure. Like, yes, I would take care of the patient in front of me, but I have a public health degree as well too. So I knew that the one patient I was taking care of in front of me, there's 20 more like that, right? There's 20 more dealing with their blood pressure issues, 20 more dealing with their diabetes, 20 more who didn't understand their cancer, right? And 20 more who just felt discouraged with the healthcare system in general, right? And I said, like, I can't just talk to this one person in front of me and think I'm doing something, right? I'm not doing a big enough dent in the society that I wanted to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember I was used to be on, you know, no shot to blogger, right? I used to be on blogger. I used to be my blog site. Like I didn't even have, it was like a blogger dot Dr. PS blog, right? I didn't even own my own website, right? That's how, you know, I didn't know much, right? So I bought my own website. I got Dr. PS blog. I made my own website. So it was like my official thing. Like I took the blogging more serious, right? To the point where like I started getting featured on Kevin MD. I got featured on Fox News. I got article clips on Essence Magazine, article clips on... There's another magazine. Oh, it's going to kill me because I don't remember saying. But like, I started like now I'm like, oh, I'm official official now, right? Because like now people are asking me like, hey, what is your opinion, right? On this medical topic? Because I see you clearly know what you're talking about, right? And then that's when... Wait, the wait, last- but how did that make you feel though? How did that make you feel? Because, you know, like that's something that you completely created and now people mm-hmm. are asking you basically to be a thought leader on that. Like, yes. talk to us about what it was like before and then what's that like to get emails or to get requests about? That transition was, it was almost surreal because I almost didn't believe it. Right? Like, I <laughs> like almost, you're talking to me? You're like, you're right, like, like you know, I got this, I was on Twitter, right? And someone hit me up from BBC News, right? They're like, hey, we want you to be on BBC News and I talk about like this IV fluid shortage. I'm like, are you serious? Huh? I was like, you want me to do what? <laughs> I was like, and so, of course, I'm, you know, I'm thinking it's spam. I'm like, no, this got to be spam. Ain't nobody trying to talk to me about IV fluid shortages. I'm like, and then, I'm, then I go to research the person. Like, oh, wow, this person's actually serious. Like, and it just kept happening to the point where, like, I was like, okay, like, this must be, like, for real, for real. 
And then it made me say like, all right, clearly, like if I just like make these little steps and now I'm the thought leader, like I need to do more, right? Because clearly I've been shortchanging myself. So now I started thinking even bigger, right? Like what else can I do, right? And that's when the videos came and that's when the podcast came. Because now like that mental block that I had in front of me that said, like, I can only be this physician who takes care of this patient who happens to be sitting in front of me has been removed, right? And now like I can talk to the whole world all at once by pressing, you know, record or pressing record on my phone, pressing record on my computer and listen. So now like that mental block has been removed and now I'm like, oh, I can do whatever I want. Now I feel like I'm a monster now, right? Because like there's almost nothing I can't feel I can't do if given opportunity. Mm, I love it. And now a word from our sponsor. Understanding how to run a business in medicine will put you at a unique advantage in the future. Whether it's leading a hospital, practice, or starting a new venture, the Physician CEO program will put you in focus from day one. Physician CEO is an accelerated business immersion program developed by MBA faculty from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. The Physician CEO program provides an intensive MBA-style education made up of modules, with each module covering topics from leadership to entrepreneurial ventures. Because of their individualized structure, each participant leaves the program with their one, three, and even five-year business plan, all designed to function in the real world. If you're a physician who is looking to start your own venture, lead your practice or department, or even start planning for succession out of medicine, then you can't afford to miss this opportunity. Class is filling up. Learn more at www.physician-ceo.com forward slash D-O-T-B. Mic drop moment right there. Right. And then, you know, that just kind of started it all, right? Where now I'm doing the podcast, now I'm doing the vlogging, right? And now I had a friend reach out to me, right? And again, this was at a time I was still in that old job, right? That I ain't like. And again, not that I didn't like the job. I just didn't like the position where I was at in the job. I didn't like what they felt my worth was versus what I felt my worth was. You know, a true story, right? When it was time to like renegotiate, they still had my same old address, same old salary. And I was like, um, you know, I get paid this, right? And they're like, like, yeah, like, oh, but we figure you'll make more. And like, no, 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 no. Like, first of all, this address is old, right? So you don't even have my updated address and you bringing me this same old salary? Nah. So that's when I had to make that exit plan. I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. And then I get this phone call from my friend who said, hey, you know what? I've been listening to what you've been doing. I've been seeing what you've been doing. I think you'll be great for this opportunity here. And, you know, lo and behold, I was always interested in medical education, of course, right? Because that's been my thing. And I got the position as a program director, right? So now I'm a program director for internal medicine residency program, right? And this is, again, a little bit under four years out of residency, right? Which is crazy when you think about it, you know? And I truly, truly believe that had I not listened to that podcast episode, had I not checked myself and said, you know what, this is my worth, right? That I probably wouldn't be here today. Mm, I love it. I love it. Has there ever been a time where you felt like what you really want for Dr. Barry Pierre doesn't really correlate with what Dr. Pierre should be doing? If you know what I mean from a medical sure. standpoint, like sure, is, sure. is there ever like what Dr. Pierre is doing doesn't match with what clinically Dr. Pierre should be doing? I always have that conversation in my mind and I hear other people talk about it. I think that's the best way I could describe it. Like, do you ever fight amongst yourself like that? You, you know, you get into that position, right? Where you're doing what you're doing, doing what you love, right? But you still feel that like the area of emptiness, right? Because like, could I be doing more? Am I doing enough? Right. And, you know, am I satisfied? Right. And again, this is fresh out of residency. I was in attending. I was doing well. But am I doing enough? And I think that's where I fell in love with your podcast. Right. Because like I started seeing other physicians who also felt that same way I was feeling like, oh, it's not like they didn't love their job. They just didn't feel complete. Yeah, it's community. Right. And regardless, and I tell my pre-med folks all the time, right, regardless of how much a person pays you, if you don't feel complete doing what you're doing, you're not going to be happy doing it. So yes, I was the internist. Yes, I was a community physician. But even then, I still felt I wasn't doing enough. It only took a sliver, right? It only took 1% of me, 2% of me, 5% of me to feel I wasn't doing enough to say I need to do something different. Right. And not to say I need to do something outside of medicine, but I just need to do something different because where I'm at right now is not a position I need to be. Mm. Now, Dr. Barry, let's pivot a little bit. Let's learn more about you, like who you are. Let's take it all the way back to the eighth grade, man. Like, let's learn about Barry Pierre before he was Dr. Barry. Where'd you grow up? Yes. Your interests, all of that, man. So, I'm from uh, Lake Worth, Florida, which is South Florida, uh, Palm Beach County. 
and born and raised, born and raised in South Florida. And I honestly, I remember, you know, even as early as elementary school, right, saying, you know what, I'm going to be a doctor, right? And I knew I wanted to be a doctor because I was a big fan of Doogie Howser. Oh, uh, like, yeah, I'm I remember gonna, that show, yeah. I was like, I'm, like, I'm going to be like Doogie Howser. Like, and I didn't have no family who was in the health field. I didn't have any friends who were in the health field. I just knew I wanted to be like Doogie Howser. And my friends, thankfully, I've always been in a pretty he, good He surgery. was a doctor by the age of 16 or something? Yeah, 16, right. He was a surgical resident. I'm like, when did you go to med school again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. This, he was just crazy genius, right? And I was like, oh, you know, that could be me. Like, why can't that be me? Mm-hmm. Right? You know, you know, you don't know no better when you're young, right? And <laughs> Yeah, but you're 18 uh, at this point. No, I'm teasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But so you, you know, you're great. <laughs> sure, sure. You know, and I'm around friends who were supportive, right? So they used to call me Dr. Pierre, right? Like I've been getting called Dr. Pierre since I've been in like elementary school, right? Yeah. Which is everybody which, knew. They were there, everybody knew. Thankfully I made it, right? Because woof. Right. So I <laughs> a lot of pressure, right? But again, when you're in eighth grade, you don't even know that's a lot of pressure. I didn't even realize, you know, the difficulty of getting into medical school. I just knew I wanted to get into medical school and like, that's all there was. And I remember in eighth grade, I was about to go to high school and our advisor was like, yeah, you know, it was one of the first times I realized like, oh, this medical school might be a little bit more difficult than I thought, (laughs) right? Because she was like, oh, well, you know, do you plan on going to the magnet program? Do you plan on doing this? Do you plan on doing that? I said, oh, what do I need to do that for? She said, well, how are you going to get into medical school? I said, oh, I just thought I'd just apply, you know, sign a piece of paper and I'm in there. And, you know, she broke it down to me. Naive, (laughs) Naive, man. It's amazing. It's funny, though, right? (laughs) It's heartwarming, though, too. Yeah. No, she broke it down. She's like, all right, no, baby, I'm going to need you to do this, 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 and that. And then she messed around and told me how long it takes to be a doctor, right? Again, I didn't know no better. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, it's going to take like, you know, 10 years, 12 years. I'm like, how long? I was like, I got to go to school for undergrad and then I got to do medical school and I got to do another, what? I said, you know what? This doctor thing might not be uh, oh. the thing for me, right? So, so it was, that, it was, that, you almost got deterred by that. Time. Almost got deterred, man. She told me that. I guess she told me, again, when well, you don't know no better, you realize, you think by the time you be 30, right, you're going to be super old and crutches, right? right? And that's all she was telling me. She was telling me, yeah, you're going to be a physician, but you're going to be about 30 years old when that happens, right? So she tried to hit a detour, but, you know, thankfully Doogie Hauser kept me through. And mm-hmm. I said, you know what? If Doogie Hauser can do it, I can do Why it Why can't well. Dr. Barry do it? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, so then we get to high school, high school, medical magnet. I was a medical magnet. I was doing well. And then I ran to that pre-med advisor who I think a lot of people unfortunately run into who says, yeah, you know what? This doctor thing might not be for you as well. Mm-hmm. Right. And okay. she just thought, you know, maybe I was uh, too jovial, too jokey. Like I wasn't serious enough. And again, it was like, oh my God, what do you mean I can't be a doctor? Again, these are things that are like life-changing moments that or it could have been where I said, you know what? Maybe this doctor thing ain't going to be for me. But then I used to think about, you know what? Doogie Howser did it. And then by that time I'm in high school, I was thinking about my pediatrician, Dr. Gaston. I'm like, hey, Dr. Gaston can do it. Doogie Howser can do it. You know, Dr. Pierre is coming right behind him. I'm going to be the community physician. I take care of all of the sick. Man, I love it, man. That's a great story. Great story. Yeah, well, look, we're getting towards the end of this interview, man. Let's do some fast fire questions. I ask a question. You tell me what comes off the top of the dome piece. You ready? Yes. Okay. So listen, if we can parse this down to one really important topic, what's the most important thing you want listeners to get from this podcast? I want listeners to understand that, you know, the, the sky is the limit on what you can do. You know, a lot of times we are our own worst enemy. You know, we set our own barriers on top of ourselves, especially as physicians who are type A and who feel that everything has to be perfect before you go. Again, I made mistakes doing the blog. I made mistakes doing the podcast. I made mistakes doing the vlogging, but I kept going uh, and proved along the way. So understand that it does not have to be perfect to go, but, you know, don't put that hurdle on yourself. I love it. I love it. So what's a personal habit that Dr. Barry's doing? that has really helped you become either more successful or just a doc outside the box? I think it's crazy. Like writing stuff down has been like immense, right? And I mean, like I'm I'm talking about old school planner writing stuff down, not even in the digital standpoint. You could do the digital, but just writing down my goals and saying like, this is what I want to do, you know, for next year, right? Like I actually have two eBooks, right? Like affirmation and the power of affirmation where I literally say, this is what I plan on doing next year, right? Because I want to not only write it down, but then have make sure someone can hold me accountable. So I definitely think putting it down to paper, because for us, we talk a lot, right? We talk a lot about stuff we want to do. 
And a lot of times we never do it, right? Because there's no one else to hold us accountable but ourselves. So obviously you grew up around in the 80s and you mentioned Doogie Howser, late 80s, yes. 90s show. So let's take back a little bit for, let's say you can go back to the future, right? That movie, you get yes. into a DeLorean. Let's say you can go back and meet yourself as a pre-man. Mm. Kind of, what kind of advice would you have given yourself back then? Ooh, that's a good one. You know, if I was a pre-med, I would say, hey, Barry, you know, there's going to be a couple bumps, right? And it's coming, right? Like, I know you've been trying to avoid it for years. I know you've been trying to keep the high road. There's going to be a couple bumps. There's going to be a couple people say, you know what? This might not be for you. Or there's going to be a couple people say, hey, you're already a doctor, right? Like, you don't need to do this, right? You don't need to do that. And don't listen to none of them. I love it. I love it. Man, you get me fired up with this, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm excited again. I've been a fan of Docs Outside the Box forever, right? So this is an honor for me more than anything. Man, I got to say, I'm going to have to pay you as my hype, man. I love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Barry, name a famous figure, someone that you admire, someone that you wouldn't mind trading places with for 24 hours. Who's that? Ooh, I think Kobe Bryant. What? Right. I think Let's Kobe move Bryant. on. Let's move on. Let's move yes. on. Yes. Let's move on to the next question right there. I forgot you are I forgot that Lakers. you're a bandwagon Lakers oh, yes, fan. Lakers. Lake show was in the that. Lake show was in the building. Mm. <laughs> For those who don't know, I'm really not a big Kobe Bryant fan. I respect what he does, but I'm just I respect his game, but I'm just not a big fan yes. of Kobe Bryant. It's funny. We were born the same year, around the same time and stuff. That's it's really funny. interesting to see someone you know, the life, you know, of someone born around the same time or the same, you know, year as you just do all these different things. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, I've been obviously following him since even before he got into the NBA. So oh, yes. a little disappointed in that answer, but it's all good. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> What's one life hack, one technology that you use that makes your life happier or easier? Uh, easier? Oh, right now I have, uh, especially because I'm big on social media, a social media app by the name of CoSchedule. I absolutely love it. It schedules all of my social media posts automatically. It reposts old posts. So I don't have to be out there doing it. So I say right now, without code schedule, like I don't know where I'd be at. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm all about that because, you know, as a busy physician, you don't have time to be constantly, you know, responding or retweeting and things like that. Mm -hmm. So definitely a big, big plus in that realm. So, Dr. Barry, you've listened to this show before. As of all my guests who are on the show, I want you to complete this sentence. I'm Dr. Barry Pierre. I'm not just a doc. I'm a... Ooh, a medical mogul. Ah, I love oh, it. Yeah. I love oh, it. yes. I love it, man. I love it. Hey, Dr. Barry Pierre, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, talking about your podcast, talking about what it's done for you and what other doctors can really you know, benefit from starting their own podcast, man. This was really great. And you know, I really enjoy you know, learning from you because I actually listen to your podcast also. And I think that your podcast is a little bit more difficult because at least for my podcast or at least with other podcasts that are directed towards doctors, like you can be as niche as possible, right? Like you don't have that leeway, right? Like you have to right. be able to kind of cover everything and everything. And so I think it's really difficult, but I think you're doing a great job. So I just wanted to acknowledge you for what you're doing for the community of physicians, as well as for what your patients are learning from this also, man. 